Excellent. What's up guys and welcome to Paul's Hardware. I had a new product arrive in the mail today or it was dropped off by a friendly delivery person and I decided to do a video on it immediately because it's new and exciting. Uh, this is the Steam controller. It was just distributed like today to people who pre-ordered it on Steam. It's available in wide release in stores on November 10th um, but it also is an interesting product because it completes the Steam ecosystem for one. You need uh, not just the hardware to run the Steam OS and the Steam OS itself, but also the Steam controller for the ideal living game, living living room gaming experience. Um, but you also have a $50 wireless controller with a built-in touchpad that you can use for mouse control. So even if you're not into the Steam OS thing, even if you have a Windows uh, based or even Mac based gaming system set up already, you can use this to control that in your living room and at $50 it's uh, very competitive with some of the other controllers out there on the market. So let's go ahead and get started with an unboxing and then uh, maybe I'll plug it into the Arctic Panther there behind me and do a quick demonstration. So here's the box for the Steam controller. It's uh, fairly, it's, it's actually all blue. I wasn't expecting a blue theme to be going on here, but as you can see Steam controller on the front. Uh, sort of another shot of it there on the back. Now this requires a computer with a minimum of Windows 7, Mac OS 10.10, or Steam OS running the Steam client, and a free Steam user account. So you do have to have a Steam account as well as the hardware. And uh, let's just go ahead and get this out of the box, starting by removing the sleeve. And then, oh no, there's tape here on the corner. I don't have my, I don't have my, my unboxing knife handy, so I'm using scissors. All right. <laughs> Inside the box, assuming that you open it in the proper orientation, you have the Steam controller right there looking all pretty. Uh, it seems like fairly eco-friendly packaging. You also get a couple AA batteries since it needs that to run. Uh, the little uh, USB adapter, so you plug that into the computer and that gives you your wireless connectivity. And uh, that's pretty... no, that's not quite it. What else do we have? We have this adapter. Ah, aha! It's got... so if you uh, want to position the a receiver someplace like you don't want to just plug it into the back of your computer you want to reroute it and position it somewhere where it's going to get a better signal uh, it comes with this little bit of stuff to do that which includes a USB cable all right so that's what you get in the retail box controller itself AA batteries a wireless receiver a little extendo cable which is just a USB micro to standard type A plug you can use that and it's got a little sort of heavier piece right here that you can sit on your desk and plug that adapter into and that will allow you to uh, presumably if you assuming that the there that will allow you to get yourself a little bit better positioning for uh, receiving the signal uh, and I'm imagining this is particularly going to be useful for anyone who's got their computer kind of tucked away somewhere let's move all this aside and take a closer look at the controller itself so for fifty dollars you get an ergonomically designed controller it's got some sort of matte patches on either side there. It's also got a glossy area there at the front. Uh, these pads right here are touch pads. So um, the one on the upper right here is going to be the one that you primarily use uh, instead of a mouse, for example. So use your thumb around that to guide the mouse across the screen and it works. It sort of imitates the way a trackball would work to some degree. It also has haptic feedback on that. So it will rumble and it'll actually rumble specifically where your finger is, which is unique. You also have a uh, joystick right there, which is a very similar joystick to, say, for example, the Xbox 360 controller. Steam button at the top is going to immediately launch uh, Steam if you have your computer up and running. Uh, play and pause or forward and back buttons, what have you. Uh, X, Y, A, and B. And uh, all of these buttons are individual in individually, individually controllable and adjustable uh, using the Steam software. So you can reassign those and, and what have you. Uh, it's also got these little trigger pads here on the inside. So as you wrap around with your fingers, you can kind of grip to click those. Uh, you also have some uh, some triggers here at the front. Right there. Don't feel too bad. Uh, and then, of course, your, your bumper pads there at the top and bottom. So a similar layout and a similar um, sort of button arrangement than, uh, that you would get with, say, for example, an Xbox 360 controller, and there they are side by side if you wanted to give a little comparison of the sizes. Um, however, you do get the addition of those, uh, of those touch pads at the top, and I think that's one of those things that people will find uh, very interesting and useful. Um, also nice that they've distributed the weight from the batteries a little bit better, whereas uh, with the Xbox 360 you got this pack, it's right there in the middle. Um, with the Steam uh, controller, they've moved that off to the side. Let me go ahead and pop those on right now since I have it available. So little release uh, thing there pops that off and that's uh, again also is where you have a couple buttons available via those paddles 
And then we just gotta take our batteries and pop them in like so. Ta da! Oh, and hey, it already started up and made a little, made a little beepy sound for me. And there we go. There's the steam controller all uh, put back together with the batteries in. And I will say, with the batteries in, uh, it gives a little bit more heft, a little bit more weight. And oh, oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, it's not recognizing that it's connecting to anything right now, but even as I just started pushing, it was already giving me the haptic feedback. But um, there's a quick unboxing and assembly and a closer look at the Steam Controller itself. What I'm going to do for you guys now is actually plug this into my system back here, and uh, let's give GTA 5 a shot. I'm just loading up a quick demo here, guys, and also sorry I'm further away from my microphone now, so I might sound a bit more distant. But I uh, got the controller dongle plugged in, Steam ran an update, and uh, next up immediately detects that you have this, the dongle for the controller plugged in. I'm going to turn the controller itself on now as well. Uh, and then it pops up and says, hey, if you're using a Steam controller, uh, you might want to run big picture mode because it thinks you're going to try to do this in a living room, and big picture mode is kind of what that's designed for. You can tell not to do that again if you don't always want to run big picture mode if you're just connecting it to a, a basic home system, for example. I'm just going to hit close for now. Uh, but actually, wait, no, I do want big picture mode uh, because what that will do is update the Steam's, uh, the controller's firmware. Um, since this is like early run of this, chances are it does need a firmware update, so I'm going to tell it to update real quick, and then uh, it's going to update. New firmware is being installed. Do not power it off. Might take a minute, blah, blah, blah. So let's give it a sec, and then we'll come back and uh, show you how it works. So big picture mode is loaded up, my firmware update is finished, and right from the get-go I think this is one of the things people are really going to like, which is that the right trackpad here uh, has a little bit of haptic feedback, and it works the mouse. So as you can see, mouse cursor is on the screen, and by just rotating that around it actually moves the mouse cursor around. Not too difficult, so I mean it works as you might expect a trackpad to, and that little bit of feedback it gives right underneath the touchpad is actually, it feels pretty good uh, for kind of like knowing that you're actually moving the mouse around or whatnot. Of course, you can use other buttons on the controller to navigate around uh, Steam, uh, the Steam OS big picture mode, as you might have before. Um, but let's go ahead and go into the library and uh, let's play some GTA. There we go. I think I'm curious about with GTA with this game is that GTA is one of those games uh, that if you haven't watched me play it before when I live streamed or whatever, I typically move back and forth between using a controller, which I use when I'm driving because I find that to be a more effective means of driving. Uh, back to mouse and keyboard whenever I'm on foot or whenever I actually have to aim and shoot because I definitely prefer the mouse to aim and shoot. I don't think this is going to take the place of a mouse just for, for accuracy when it comes to aiming and shooting, but I do think that it might provide, especially for a playing from a living room experience on the couch where you might not necessarily have a mouse easily accessible, uh, a nice kind of in-between or, or you know a replacement for that for when the mouse isn't as available. And I died. Okay, um, guys, this is not meant to be a full review of this controller since I just got it. I want to spend a lot more time with it. So, uh, first impressions. Uh, I like the feel of it. It doesn't feel, I don't know, durability-wise, construction-wise, it's like on par. Maybe just a very, very slightly uh, less durable feel than the Xbox 360 controller. Um, but again, uh, I've only just barely started to use it. Uh, I like the feel of it. It's definitely comfortable to use. Positioning of the X, Y, A, B here is a little bit, uh, you have to get used to going towards that at first. And then uh, the trackpad here has different functions. So depending on what you're doing, the trackpad might act a different way. So in some, t in some cases it tries to mimic the analog, the right analog stick, and in other cases it tries to mimic uh, like a, a mouse, for example. I will say that when uh, aiming with this right now was pretty difficult, especially when you're comparing it to a mouse or a keyboard. It was defaulting to the auto aim thing in GTA 5, which is like okay by me, but honestly, you know, you want the accurate precision of the aiming. Uh, the one thing from the reviews I've read of this so far is that there is a learning curve to it. Getting used to using it uh, in, in different situations, getting used to when, you know, this is going to act like a mouse versus otherwise. But guys, that's all for this video. This is the Steam Controller. I will be doing uh, some more coverage on this, some more coverage on uh, Steam Machines. I actually want to put together a Steam Machine and run the Steam OS on it here so I can give you guys more feedback on my experience with that. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one, or if you're interested in what I've got going on in my garage here, since it is a work in progress, things are looking better, but I still have some unfinished touches, as you might notice. Thanks for watching, though, and we'll see you next time.